Okay, so uh, we submitted our engineer's report on Friday. I believe the board members have a copy. Um, first item is the Chapter 94 Waste Load Management Report for West Elizabeth Sanitary Authority. Um, we talked about this last month. Our office completed the report and submitted it back to uh, Lisa's consulting engineer on Friday. Um, second item, Finleyville Arima Road Sewage Project. We did uh, advertise for the 30-day public comment period. Um, those advertisements were made last week on the 7th. Um, the 30-day period opened on uh, February 9th and closes on March 10th. Um, I believe we have received at least one public comment. Um, Diana included a copy of it here in my folder today. So um, as, as public comments are received, our office will forward those to um, Peters Creek Sanitary Authority's consulting engineer for their record as well. And then ultimately they will uh, respond to those and include them as part of the um, final plan that will get submitted to us for a decision. Um, third item on the list is Veteran Park. Um, our office, in conjunction with Larry and John, had a conference call yesterday with um, Mr. Plavchek to discuss his progress with the punch list items. Um, if the board is okay with it, our office will prepare a letter uh, to send to Mr. Plavchek requesting that he complete the work in a timely manner um, and give him some clarity as to the, the pitching mound that um, is owed as well as the other deliverables that are still owed on that um, contract work. Uh, that punch list was prepared in December um, and we need to um, make sure that that work is done. So is there any objections from the board to us preparing a letter? March 1st. Correct. Yeah, we will um, <clears throat> mention to him that we are, our expectation is that the punch list items will be addressed no later than the end of this month. Are there any concerns or questions with South Veteran Park at this point? Okay. Yep. Thank you, Larry and John, for participating in that with me yesterday. Um, next on the list, uh, similar to the sewer project, our office um, put forth the advertisement for the MS4 Pollution Reduction Plan Amendment. Um, so that public comment period, it's 30 days, not 45. I had that wrong. So sorry about that. Um, that opens on um, the 12th of February and will conclude on uh, March 13th. So um, I know Diana has a copy of that here in the office and it's also up on the township website. Mm -hmm. Both of those plans are the, the MS4 amendment as well as the uh, 537 plan. So, um, yeah, anyone can click it on the website, the 537. Right. Now, it's hefty. It's hefty. A couple pages. <laughs> All right, and then the last thing I have to discuss with the board is the um, Herb and Sheila Segi uh, sewage project. Um, we talked about this last month when um, the Segi's uh, consulting engineer uh, made a presentation of the uh, proposed uh, sewer force main and grinder pump to service their residents. Um, one of my questions or, or concerns at that point was um, there's two other properties along that private street, Doe Lane, um, which their force main will pass by uh, on its way to connecting with our uh, sewer collection system that uh, goes down to El Ramo. So we sent letters of notification to those two residents, uh, notifying them of this potential project. We requested that they provide any feedback, comments, questions, intent to participate in this project uh, by the 14th, which was our meeting today. Um, I have not received any feedback. Um, I don't know if Diana has or not. Somebody came. Okay. Verbal feedback. Okay. Um, and I can maybe do a couple of things. Sure. They could be confused. Um, 
They didn't mind the easement coming through. However, they weren't prepared or willing to have benefits done. Okay. They had did what they called a, a substantial amount of work to their septic and really wasn't on board and not put money out to. Do you know which address that was? Do you remember, John? Because you started the conversation with them and then I walked in. Is it the low side of the road or the high side? You know? The low. The low side? So as you're driving into the city's yeah. driveway, it would be the left-hand side? Bean? How old did you say that, John? Uh, 70? Oh, God. <laughs> At any rate, I, I think some point uh, <coughs> the township needs to he was consider. confused by the letter because he started out coming to kind of fight because hmm. he thought he was being told he was forced into paying for the line and tapping in and sure so you know it was explained to him about how they were making it available to people that had passed through um because someday he will be in the saggy shoes sure. to have that fight there. Sure. Uh, but he was confused about whether or not it was a, a threatening letter or whether or not it was saying, well, you know, you're going to have to come up with all this money and you're going to have to get this and you're going to have to. So I, I think he left here with a, a good He had no problem with um, it coming through his property, but he did have an issue with putting out the money too. Okay. It's my understanding that that force man will be totally within the private street the 50 foot easement that's there so i don't know that they have to cross any private property mm -hmm. to do what they're intending to do the question is if, if people in the future want to connect to that pipe my recommendation would be that that become you know the township take over that force man and that <coughs> becomes a public force man as part of the um sewage collection system so i think at some point, it's going to be important for the board to consider a decision there so that we can then direct um, the SAGES and their consulting engineer as to whether or not the township's going to take over the force man. And the only ownership would be the, the only private ownership would be the grinder pump and the connection to that. So, this is a question of mine. So when you do a storage extension like the Middle Rainbow Road, <coughs> you do the um, let's say you did a, a debt service, and anybody that joins on collects into that debt service as they join on. So what, <coughs> what happens with Herb and Sheila Segi who get to the line and yeah, it gets dedicated to the township and the next person <coughs> a year from now can tap in, but there, there's no debt service for the people that provided that for them. Right. There's a procedure in the municipal authorities act, and also part of the developers agreement would be that anyone that would connect in there would receive so much from each connection. Mm -hmm. So if you pay if the tap fees twenty, I don't know what you're going to pay that to. They would get a cut. Okay. It just it, it seems way too benevolent to be putting in the line with your own money that a year from now people can tap in after sure. you mortgage your house to do that line. For sure. Them. But the question, the question I think that that needs to be addressed is the cost efficiency for the savings of putting that force main in versus the possibility of a sand mouth or on lot septic system on the property. Because as you're, have you, TJ, you were talking about this before. Have you have you perked your, your have you done a test on your property all this thing? No, we couldn't do that for a test. <coughs> and this was the option that we choose to, to uh, do the force main and that to the manhole. Do they have the money for this this line? I can't answer that. Do you have the money for the line? It's gotta be. You have to fix it. <coughs> I'm just hoping if they're connecting that we get a little bit of a hit from that. So, <laughs> the here's, here's, here's the thing. I, I think if you're going to pass two other properties, it should become a public sewer in the event that somebody connects in the future. However, the, 
the sincere question that I have is, is it more cost effective for the property owners, the SAGEs in this case, to construct a new on-lot system and forego a grinder pump and a force main sewer and continue to operate, you know, a, an on-lot sewage system? Or, you know, should they proceed with a, with a force main? And that's, that's a question for their consulting engineer to address. Our office as the township engineer really isn't involved in that conversation. Have you had that? Have you had that discussion with your engineer? Mm -hmm. And has he looked into the issue of an online system that is possible? That was so long ago, mm -hmm. right? They've been playing with this for <coughs> years now. I mean, we're just. I, I, my concern, and this is board, David Boyd's concern, is you'd be you know, spending more money than you should spend. When I review these drawings, it's it's six or seven hundred feet of pipe that would be installed for them to extend their you know, grinder pumps force main lateral out to the township's man. And who's responsible for the maintenance of the, of the grinder pump? We would be. The property owner. Typically yeah, the property owner. Yeah. Now that's the other question because I, I don't think there's any, there are no grinder pumps in the El Reyma collection system right now. So we, you know, we, we would be talking about. What I've learned with grinder pumps is that they're a costly situation because they break down every so often. And that was one of the things that our neighbor was worried about. He said he's gone many days without electric over there. That's one of the things he stated. He was concerned about the grinder pumps that the whatever tank, I don't know that much about grinder pumps, but would only hold a, a couple of days worth of sewage before you'd have an issue. Sure. I don't know what he pays to get his stuff pumped, but really, you know, if, if it was sharing that line with a few neighbors, it wouldn't be so cost prohibitive. I mean, a new Walmart system is going to cost a certain amount of money, but it's it's very much likely that it would be less expensive than the project that they're proposing now. A number of years ago, they came up with different systems, you know, beach balls and all that stuff. Is that, are they, are those are still permitted by the PCP. They came up with like three or four different systems back then. Yeah, small flow treatment small thing that they have on their Well, and there's, I mean, there's funding opportunities that are available for that. Low interest loans through PennVest for mm -hmm. on-off septic system replacement or repair. Um, there's, I mean, there's options to consider. I guess, you know, the the, the SAGIs and their consulting engineer have approached us with this plan to construct this force main. Not, one, of, one of, if not my biggest concerns, is the fact that it's passing two other folks on the way to connect to our manhole. Do you have an ordinance? And, you do have an ordinance. You know, mandatory. there's a mandatory tap-in. Um, if you're within 150 feet of a sewer, that's in the second class township code. Um, and, and really, if more than one house is connected to a sewer lateral, that needs to become a public sewer. Um, so, you know, I, I think really it's in the township's best interest and probably the homeowner's best interest to have that <coughs> be constructed and then taken over by the township in the future. However, I have my reservations about whether that's really the most cost-effective solution for these folks. The question is, the grinder pump, if the grinder pump's installed and it fails, who's responsible? Who's going to be responsible for that? The property owner. Mm -hmm. So, I think the, the concern is maybe you say, you know, we're trying to work with you. Just, I think what TJ is trying to say, what we're trying to say is maybe talk to your consulting engineer to see what's most cost efficient for you in terms of well, we're not going to push I mean, we're not going to push you to take it to court or anything like that right now but I'm just trying to suggest you may want to look into it. Does that make sense to you? Well yeah it seems <coughs> like we have I mean this has been going on for years okay, now then. but All right. I'm going to go over that with him. I He wanted he was going to come in tonight and I wish he would have but um I know TJ is going to talk to him tomorrow, and Doug and I will speak with him again so, and see what he says. The neighbor who was, was coming 
in front of their house. So they kind of would, if we took it over, they kind of. It'd be required to town board. Board to a second spot of township code, yes. What is the, what's the funding vehicle for, for the thing? Do they have to give a loan or anything? <coughs> Do they have a loan or grants? Or do Penvest has low interest loans for homeowners specific for repair and replacement of online. Basically mortgages in it. 1% or uh, I'm not sure all the specifics. Okay. I think there's an, there's an option through RUS too maybe. I, don't think there's, I think RUS might have something too. Yeah. Right. I think they may have, it might be even grant, I don't know. send a letter to the their engineer reducing our conversation tonight to okay. that's it for the engineer's report